Hi everyone, Sandy here. Welcome back to my channel. This is another Country Craft Creations Design Team project. This is a recipe folio. This is my second project that I made with my design team package that contained the sugar and spice paper collection from Country Craft Creations. This is a really quick and easy one to make. I think you'll like it. Uh, the walkthrough showcase is after the tutorial and the tutorial for this will be starting in just a few minutes. Stay tuned. So for this project, for this little recipe folio, I'm going to be using what I have left of my design team package from Country Craft Creations Sugar and Spice. I'll try to keep track of how many papers I use. So far I have uh, cut into three full sheets that I had left. Um, I'll be using scraps and I may pull some from another collection that I have left over on st in stock. I'm going to be using lightweight chipboard, which I've already cut. Uh, two sheets of that for sure and then also I'll be using the black artisan cardstock for uh, components of my inside pages and stuff. So first we're going to work on the cover. So for the measurements here let me grab those for you real quick. I have the two cover pieces which are seven by nine. So we have two that are seven by nine. Our spine piece will be one and a half by nine. So we have those, that's the lightweight chipboard. And this time I'm going to wrap with the pattern paper. So this is a little bit different than what we normally do. And I have two pieces of this with the cookies, the plaid, that is nine by 11. Two that are nine by 11, that's to wrap the cover front and back. And for the spine, I'm using the red dots. So cut one that is four and a half by 11. So let's get started on wrapping that. I'm going to grab my scoreboard and my spacers that I like to use from Country Craft Creations. If you haven't checked those out, just go to the online store and look for the spacers. It's great in helping you to make your covers. I'm also going to be using Art Glitter Glue, which I have put into my little glue dispenser here. So I'm getting this ready to go. Okay. So I want this to be my side that's going to be on the outside. So I'm going to turn this upside down and I'll put the one inch spacer in. And I am going to glue this down. Uh, if you're concerned about glue lines, then you might want to use tape instead um, or the score tape sheets. You know what, I think on this one, I am going to use my 3 8 inch score tape. And I'm just going to put it around the perimeter. This will make sure that we don't have any glue lines showing. Normally when I have a cardstock backing, then pattern paper on top. I don't have to worry about that. So I do use the glue for that. And if you like the score tape sheets, these, those work great as well. So what I'm going to do is show you one, wrapping one side of a cover, and then I'll do the other off camera, just to save us a bit of time in your video watching. So you don't have to do it solid. Just several different strips across like that. Oops, kind of make them straight if you can. <laughs> and then I burnish them down, burnish your backings down. That's to make the backings peel off easier and makes your tape stick down good. Then we're going to go ahead and take all the tape backing off. So this is a little slower process than using glue, of course. But to make sure we have a nice smooth cover, it is worth the little extra time. Just, just probably a few minutes at the most. So, of course, if this was a sheet, you could just pull one sheet off and be ready. So now we have this, I'm going to place it down Make sure I've butted up to the top of my spacer and to the side and go ahead and stick that down. So we have that really nice. Now, 
for some reason. I have more margin than I planned. So I probably cut it bigger than I should have. Let's see, this is a seven inch, so nine should have been correct. Hmm. And 11. No, I'm not going to worry about that. I'm just going to wrap it. So I do like to fold on all the sides. like that and when I miter I just use my scissors and cut and leave about an eighth of an inch of paper extending beyond the tip of my chipboard corner just like that now I will use glue because this part will not be showing so on the long sides I work with that first I put a bead of glue right down the fold line and then glue on the flap here. And then I fold it over and burnish it with a cloth because there is going to be some glue oozing out. I know that because I always do have glue oozing out. So I flip it around and do the other side. Now when you get these sides on, you need to take your bone folder if you're cutting at the angle and burnish in the little excess of paper that is extending from this side that goes into the end flap where that angle is cut. You want to make sure you have a nice fold in there and I'm double checking so that one looks good. That one looks good. I love how that looks wrapped. So now we put the glue on the short sides as well, along the fold line and on the flap. Other side as well. And so you do both of your cover pieces just this way if you're doing the pattern paper wrap wrap if you don't want to do pattern paper wrap well, that's fine you can wrap the cardstock and then cut pattern paper to cover you don't have to do it exactly like i'm doing it so there's one i'll do the other off camera and i'll be right okay so i have both covers wrapped and i apologize for kind of cutting off abruptly in the last little video clip i am using a different software i'm actually recording inside of the software that I edit with to kind of save me some time hopefully but apparently I need to um, finish talking and wait a second and then push the stop button so anyway if it was kind of what happened to me that's where, where I went uh, so there's the covers I love wrapping with the um, Country Craft Creations papers this wraps beautifully it doesn't crack or at least I don't have any problems with it it's a wonderful feel so this is not a, as heavy a, a album. This is a folio that I'm making for recipes. So next we're going to do our spines. Board. This so is the side I want uh, to see. So I'm going to put this in with this side up. And I take my spacer guide that has the one inch on the top and the one and a half on the side because I want a half inch, one and a half inch on each side and just one on each top and bottom. So make sure I've got that in and I pull my tape backing off. And the, the great thing about using lightweight chipboard is you can cut it with your regular cutter. So go ahead and move that off. Now then the next thing we're going to do is just fold it on each end and burnish it. I like to burnish really well right there. Now I am not going to do any cutting on this because I think I want to put this wrap to the outside of the album cover. So we don't want any uh, mitering going on yet here. So I'm going to burnish really well. And 
I'm going to go ahead and glue these down. So I put glue along the ends of the chipboard and then glue on my flap here, my one inch flap. Okay, and just fold that over and then I burnish it really well, pressing up against that chipboard, making sure I can see the indention of it and burnish that out like that. Do the other side the same way. Okay, make sure you burnish. Pressing right up against the chipboard to get that groove. So I know this looks a little weird. <laughs> this is the real size of the album. These are little miniature mock-ups that I wanted to show you. Make sure that I clearly showed you how to put this spine on when you're wrapping it to the outside. So I, I didn't think in my video that I showed it clear enough and I wanted to redo it, but I didn't have enough of the same paper. And so I thought, well, I don't need to do a full cover. I'll just do a little bit small one and then maybe later on I'll make a little bitty uh, junk journal or something out of this later on. But anyway, <clears throat> pretend this is the full size that you have your two covers and then your spine with your one and a half inch in between and your one and a half inch wings on each side. Now this is going to be different than what we normally do. Normally we attach them so that it's like this. And you can still do that if you want. But I wanted the uh, patterned paper, the spine, to be wrapped over. But you've got to allow a little extra room here where it folds. You don't want any uh, cracking or anything like that. So this is going to attach with this like this. Okay, so you're attaching finished side here to the unfinished side here. And you want to make sure you're leaving about an eighth of an inch or so from this chipboard piece to the edge of this chipboard piece. Okay, just like that. So I am going to put glue, a line of glue about an eighth of an inch from the edge, from the bottom of this, and just out on the wing. Okay, put plenty of glue here. Remember, yours would be the full size. So then you lay this on here, line it up, and leave a space of about an eighth of an inch between the chipboard and the wrapped edge. So then it's going to be like that. Okay, so remember, yours is a full size. Once you've got that, burnish it on. I'm not doing any folding on this pattern paper, okay? No folding yet. Then we take the other one, and it's going to go here. And we've got to make sure we've got our directions going correct, which I do. Same thing on this wing. You put your line of glue about an eighth of an inch from the fold. Oops. Glue on your wing part. Finish side of your cover. Make sure it's going the same direction as your pattern. And then lay this onto the wing. And again, about an eighth of an inch from the fold or from that chipboard. Bunch that down. Fold it over and give it a good brush. Now, I didn't have mine on right. Of course, this is a miniature one, so it may not fit right. I may have one side too long, and that's okay. <laughs> so we burnished that. Now we're going to let that dry really well. And we have our cover just like this. Now, I did goof up in my main video. I'm not going to redo that whole thing. Um, I put this pattern paper down, and then I put the spine. Don't do that. Put your spine one on first. And then we'll put this one on, and then you will do this one when you attach your pages for this side of the album. So I put a warning in the video on that. So let me grab my piece of paper, then I'll show you the spine cover here, and then it's folding up the cover. So hang on. So you take a piece of pattern paper that you've cut to fit for your spine support inside, and for this bigger album here, yours will be uh, five and a half by nine. And apply score tape sheets or score tape. This one I'm using score tape. Either one will work as long as you've got a good coverage on there. You don't want to use glue on the spine section on the inside because it bends a lot and can cause bubbling if you use glue and you don't have good coverage. 
I know some people still use glue for that and it works fine for them, but they're probably getting a, a solid coverage of glue on there somehow. I've done it and have, have had bubbling and didn't like it on that. So for that, I do use either solid score tape or the score tape sheet for this piece here that goes in. And again, in the video, I incorrectly showed you putting it on after I did the two covers, inside covers, and you want to put it on first this way. So I line it up so that it's centered. And I do cut mine so that it's the exact size of the album cover, top to bottom, pretty much. And I burnish it like that. Now then, we're going to burnish that on. And then we're going to gently burnish, kind of fold up, and then gently burnish right here into our spine and I'm just doing a gentle burnish to get those lines and then I very carefully fold my cover not a hard fold and bend so that it doesn't do any cracking and then just work it in and out and there's the cover on my little mini album <laughs> so that's what I did for this big one of course with it being bigger I can uh, make sure it closes up a little bit better. But anyway, very gently on the inside here when you're working with patterned paper like this to make sure there's no cracking. So we have it all in like that. So next we would put our piece of paper here that we want to be our inside. This one's different because I have a different size. I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. I just want to finish it up or show you. I'm just going to temporarily put it in there. So it would be something like that to finish the inside of the album and then the other side, depending on what you're going to put in. So if for this tutorial, you can go ahead and put your pattern paper on the left side because you're going to put the waterfall on top. For your right side, wait and put your hinge of your accordion pages here on the right and then put your pattern paper. So I apologize in the video for that. But I think this will straighten all that up and show you how to get this spine wrapped without a, a cracking here with the paper. Now we're ready to pattern the inside of our cover. I took one full sheet that I had left of this gingerbread and the berries. I'm going to use the gingerbread side. And I cut two that are six by nine. And then for the inside spine section, I cut one that is five and a half by nine. And I did use score tape a sheet on this side of this. These I'm going to use glue. So I'm going to go ahead and glue these in. Same thing, it's going to be an exact fit, about a sixteenth of an inch off the edge here on the left. Line it up right up against the bottom and the top here. Okay, burnish that. First, we're going to create an accordion fold out pages for or folio and I'm going to put mine on the right you can put it on either side that you want it would just be reversed if you put it on the left but I'm going to put mine on the right so you're going to take four full 12 by 12 sheets of cardstock I'm using the artisan black and you can cut these down to nine by seven you need four that are nine by seven I've already cut mine and I'm going to show you how to score them and then from a scrap that you have left from cutting one of these, you would cut one pocket that is seven and a half by four. Now that's, I'm only going to do one pocket. If you want more than one pocket, you certainly can do that with your scraps of paper that you're going to have. So you're going to score all of these the same. You're going to put your four that are nine by seven. You're going to put the seven inch in at the top and you're going to score at a half inch. On all four, I've already done mine, so go ahead and do that, and then fold and burnish each page. So 
I just throw it on the score line and give it a good burnish. So you should have four pages all the same size. Now I'm making these the exact size of the cover. If you want them a little shorter, you certainly can trim them down a little bit if you feel more comfortable doing that. So I've got those. Then for the pocket, you cut the one piece that's seven and a half by four. And you're going to score on your seven and a half inch side at a half inch and at seven. Turn, score the four inch side at a half inch and this is going to make you a pocket so i'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish these up let me move the scoreboard out of the way fold right there and burnish really good and then i'm going to cut out those corners i'm just going to very slightly cut out side of that square. I don't I mostly I'm cutting out that square, but I do miter just a tiny bit. Just like that. Then I like to bring them together. I've recently started doing this and I like the way my pockets generally turn out. Now if you have a little bit of that paper left in there where you kind of cut in there, you're going to need to trim that off just a tiny bit. But I like to um, bring up my bottom of my pocket up, take my glue, and put a little bit of glue right here and right here. And if you want to clip them, you can. And just bring the pockets together. Seal up those corners. Burnish that. And burnish that. So that gives me a good pocket in here that doesn't have anything hindering those corners down there. Okay, so there's my pocket. Now, I think on this one, I want to do something a little different with my envelope punch board, I'm thinking. So now this should be six and a half inches, so three and a quarter is the half. So. I don't want to do a, a center punch this time. I want to do something a little different. I think I'm going to put it at two inches on the left, punch, flip it over, and put that edge at two inch, and punch. We've done this before on uh, different things. But now we have this section we're going to cut out. So when I put my scissors in, at that dip, I just use my long scissors and I just cut all the way across the other side. And now I have a pocket that looks like that. That's what I want. So now let's put our accordion page section together. <clears throat> now I'm going to be putting this into the book with this half inch attached on the right side. Now, I could have put this on under my pattern paper and hidden it, but I forgot as always. So I'm going to be putting something in there to hide that. I'm really good at forgetting that part. <laughs> so I'm going to lay this down with my hinge folded under to the right. Okay, then I'm going to take my next one. And this one is going to go on the left side. So with my hinge opened up, see it's folded there, open it back, there's the hinge. I'm going to put glue on the inside of the hinge, just on that half inch piece. Take this and the cut edge goes into the fold all the way up. Make sure they match top and bottom and burnish that. Up. If I need to wipe off any glue, I will. So there we have that extended there. Now we're going to take the next one and it's going to go on the right side. So we have it open. There's that. Open it back. There's your hinge. Glue on that. I had to turn it so I can get my glue on there.
Now we have the cut edge of the last one we put on and the fold here, the hinge underneath. Line them up the page into that fold. Line them up on the bottom and close it down and burnish. And then the last one goes the hinge over here to the left, the cut edge of the last page. Open this back. We've got our half inch here. So we put our glue on that. Lift this up. Cut edge goes into the fold. Line those up. And burnish it. I see I've got some rough edges right there from my trimmer. I probably didn't hold it down good, so I'm just going to sand that off. No big deal. Okay. Burnish this down. So now we have it opening like this. Like this. And then it, you, know, you can go the other way. And then, of course, it accordions out. Now that here on the front is where our pocket's going to go. And now this pocket is going to fit right in here. So I'm going to flip it over. The glue is going to go on the half inch on the back side. Line it up so that it's within the page and lined up here on the bottom. Right there. All of that glue. On the bottom here and on the sides. A lot of glue came out when I pressed that. That's okay. That just shows me I have plenty on there. And it all will be covered up. So I've got that burnished. Now then. I have this hinge here left, and that's what's going to go in the cover of the book. And like I said, I should have put it on underneath my pattern paper, but I'm okay with it. I'm just going to line this up. Now, it's an exact fit with this cover. So my glue goes on the hinge. And I want the fold of that hinge to go right up against the edge of the album cover and make sure it stays within the cover, top and bottom, and burnish it in. And then I will cover that maybe with a pocket or something. I will decide. So we have this pocket here on the front. So this page opens up like this slide this over. Oh, I forgot my closure. No problem. I'm just going to quickly lift up because the artisan card stock and this pattern paper is very, very forgiven. I am so sorry. So I cut 16, 32, about 36 inches of twine. And I want it to go on this center around here. So it's going to go about right here. And I'm going to go ahead and tie it so I know where it's at. And I can always trim my tails later. Tie it into a bow. Now it's only going to be attached. See, that's too long, but that's fine for right now. It's only going to be attached here. within this hinge. Now then we're ready to put the glue back on that half inch hinge. And like I said, artisan cardstock and the Hunter Craft Creations pattern paper is very, very, very forgiving. So this way, make sure it's going the right way. Pocket down here at the bottom. And we line it up again, 
top and bottom. Get it straight. And press it on. Oops. Just getting it straight. And we are on. Okay, so there is our accordion attached down with my uh, cord like it's supposed to be. And so next we'll be doing our waterfall section here and then uh, the pattern paper I may do off camera. I haven't decided to see how long this video is getting uh, because I want this to be a shorter, quicker one for you. And um, we'll do the waterfall recipe cards. It's going to be a little different. It's going to be what I call a, an accordion accordion type waterfall. So I'll be back. So we've got our accordion pages here on the right side of our folio. And then we have the string closure and a pocket. So we're going to put a waterfall over here for our um, recipe cards. And I'm going to make one that I'm calling, I don't know what else to call it, a, uh, accordion waterfall. They don't accordion out as much as this, but you'll see what I mean in just a bit once we get going on this. So this takes a lot of cardstock. So if you don't want to do that, then I suggest that you do the regular waterfall, which would be the same uh, width. You just have to adjust for that. But I'm giving you what I'm going to be making. And so you can decide based on what you want. So I already have one here made. So it has the regular half inch flap here, but it's extended so that it folds in. So you actually from one waterfall flap get four and I'm hoping this will work <laughs> pretty well. It was an idea I have, I haven't done before. Um, but if you're wanting just the regular waterfalls without the fold in or the accordion type, you would want to cut yours the same width, like I said, so this is, would be six and a half, and you would cut it to five and score at a half inch on the five inch side. That would just give you one single, and you use a whole lot less cardstock. But the way I'm doing it, I'm going to be using 10 sheets. I'm going to make 10 flaps this way, 11 sheets, and a scrap. So we need a base and 10 for 10 flaps. So the first one we cut is our base, which is. Um, I like to use this one down here, six and a half by, I think that's the wrong one, that's not my flap, my waterfall, um, my waterfall base is six and a half by nine, so I pulled out the wrong one, sorry about that. Yeah, this is the base. Set this one aside, six and a half by nine. Then you cut 10 that are six and a half by nine and a half. And you're going to put the nine and a half in at the top, score at a half inch, and at five. Then you fold it up. So you see this fits in there. I don't think we'll have to trim it, but we might. So keep that in mind. Um, then you fold this one back. So that's your half inch attachment right there. And then I want this to go the other way inside of it. So that's how I'm gonna see if it fits inside that half inch. So I think it's okay. See right there, if you feel like it, if it bows a little bit, Maybe we should trim off just a sixteenth of an inch. So let me get a smaller trimmer here and I'll show you what I mean. So if you see that, you just want to trim off a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. So line that up and see where my cut's going to be. And I just sliced off that much just a sixteenth of an inch then when it folds in it is not hitting that piece there so i have that one done i have one here already i'm going to do the same thing so i'm going to do that on all of them i'm just going to cut off 
a tiny bit. Very, very small, like that, okay? So slice that off the end of them after you scored them so that it folds up like that. So I'm gonna do the rest of mine off camera and then we'll come back and put it all together. So I have all my flaps folded and scored and I ended up scoring this one forward and this one under on all of them. So let's see if all these fit and how it works. And this will have a magnetic closure to hold everything down. So we'll make that later. So we take our um, six and a half by nine and we take one of our flaps here. I'm always folding it wrong. So it goes this way. So we have the flap, the half inch folded back, and then I have this one folded in, and I did trim all of them. So this is going to go right here against this top edge. You want to make sure you get this first one really straight. If you need to use your scoreboard to help you keep it straight, then by all means do that. So you take your glue and you're just gonna put it on your half inch flap with it folded like that. And then we're going to line it up, the fold edge of that hinge right along the cut edge of our back piece. We could put this straight into the book, but this is easier to make you get it on straight. So look it up, look at it, I mean, and then burnish this down. So you see we have this one folded under. We have the hinge here and this folded under like this. Then we open it back so you can see your line here, the cut line where you glued it down. You take your next one. I have to reverse everything here because I put it wrong. <laughs> so we have our hinge folded back like that. Flip it over. Put our glue on. As long as you're getting your half inch hinge on correct, it won't matter how this is folded until, until the end, till we fold it correctly. I know it's hard on black to see, but I'm lining up that fold right against that end of that half inch. So I have that fold here, the half inch gap, and then this one. And make sure it's lined up on the bottom here and burnish. Okay, and then we fold this up and we just keep going. I'm gonna show you one more. So the glue, fold it down, glue on the back of this half inch. So you see it's folded down. This fold here goes up against this cut edge of the last one. And I'm lining up my edges right here. And I'm wondering if I have room for 10. So we'll see if I don't, I will correct that on the cutting guide and on screen, but I think I planned it that we do. And I'm just checking them all. And so I'll keep going and I'll come back and show you the finished piece. Okay, so here we are with the waterfalls. I did get all 10 on there. You could get by with just nine because we have this solid piece down here, but I'm happy with this. Now I made sure to keep this edge nice and straight. I did have a few here that were a little off. And what I did is where those were at is I opened them up, put this in my big guillotine cutter uh, that can cut real thick and I just trimmed, it was just the tiniest, tiniest bit, I don't even have it here, that trimmed off and evened it out. So there's the waterfall, the accordion, because it opens up and then you can open it up again on each flap. And again, as I said, if you don't want that, you don't want to use that much cardstock, you don't need that many uh, waterfalls, then just use the uh, first size that I gave you for just the regular flaps, and that will still work on this. So I love how that turned out. So now we need a magnetic closure to hold this down. So I have cut a piece of cardstock that's two inches by seven and a half. You could make it wider if you want, and then one that's three and a quarter by four and a quarter that's going to hold that down. So let's get the scoreboard real quick. And you take your um, 
seven and a half piece, put it in at the top, seven and a half, and we're going to score it a half inch. And then I want some extra space, I think. So I'm going to do a quarter of an inch. So it's a score at a half inch and three quarters. So when you fold that, you have your half inch to attach. Then you have a quarter extra for a little, little space in there. And then we have this part here. So that's all we need for that. We take the waterfall. And I'm going to look and see where I want this to stop. So you fit this in. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it about right there. So when I flip this over, the glue goes on the half inch only on the back side. Let me show you up close. So we've got my quarter inch half inch, see that's folded in. Then I take this and I put the half inch centered with the fold right along the bottom edge of this back piece. So it looks pretty good. I'm gonna flip it over and take a look. And there we go. So that looks pretty good. Burnish that down. Okay, I'll let that little quarter inch stand up we might need it. So now we need to take our magnets and I'm using some that I had taken off an old project, I think. <laughs> oh, so it doesn't have as much sticky left. That pull the backings are already off. So I'm going to open this one down and I'm going to put, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to put my magnet on this piece here. And I'm going to put it about three quarters of an inch down and put it in the center. And since it doesn't have any sticky on it, I'm going to put tape over it. To hold it down. Okay. And attach the other one to it. This one does have some sticky left on it, but I'm going to put a little tape on the finished side of this one. Yeah. Then put it upside down on to this magnet. Whoops, that's not going to work. Wrong side. This way. We want them attached together. Hey guys, are y'all the same magnets? Yep, they're not working. <laughs> Let me grab a different one here. Hold on just a second. It's stuck to my rack over here. There we go, because that's the guy we want. So put the finish side to the sticky. Put it down like that. And we're going to bring this up. Make sure this stands up. Press all these down. And press the magnet right there. Grab. There we go. Now it's ready for the, your card, pattern paper, whatever you're going to put there on the front. And then I take this one and I'm going to attach this. Nope. Super strong. It came loose. Let me put some glue on this one. This is why I like to use them when they're new, but I didn't want to waste any magnets. I had taken them off of something where I changed my mind. So, yeah. So you have to improvise. So I got my mark there. Now I'll take my other magnet and put it where it goes. Not as centered as it was, but that's fine. A little bit more tape. And then we'll check it. Let's see. Okay. So there it is. So this one's going to have probably a cut apart on it. And I'm going to glue this one on just the uh, part of this 
from this cut here up. And then I'll have pattern paper or a cut apart on that. So this was uh, three and a quarter by four and a quarter. I'm just going to line it up. and burnish this down on this side. So this side will also be covered by just patterned paper on this back side. So let's go ahead and put it in the book real quick. <clears throat> So I am going to put it down solid into here. You could put just glue on the um, ends and make it a belly band or a pocket, but I'm going to make it go all the way down. So technically, you didn't have to cover all this with pattern paper. You could have just planned your strips and been a little more conservative than I was. But at the time, I wanted it to look pretty. <laughs> and smooth in there and so now i'm just adding my glue on the back piece make sure it sticks down and we're going to lay this so that i'm centering it make sure we don't go over the fold put this right at the bottom here so it looks like about a quarter of an inch on each side. You don't want to put it into your spine. And I'm just going to push it up just a tiny bit. I've got extra room here. I just want to make sure it's straight. Okay, and then I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to pull these up and burnish all of this in here. And then between each one that's where it's going to hit is this space in there that's where it's touching down so you want to burnish really well between each one you don't want any rippling or coming apart on that base from the back and now we have our waterfall in so that is the construction of this folio. Simple, nice, and neat. Lots of places for your recipe cards, some photos. I'm gonna go ahead and add my pattern paper. I'm not doing that in the tutorial. I'm gonna add my pattern paper. Um, I'll do a little clip here at the end of this video to show you what it is. The recipe folio is finished. I'm really excited how it turned out. I'm gonna share uh, with you what I did on the inside. So here it is on the outside with the one and a half inch spine. I just kept the front real simple, just put a cut apart, matted it to white and black, kind of make it pop out, but just keep everything nice and flat on this little recipe folio. It opens up like this. So you see this when you open it. Um, nothing in the spine. Here we have the magnetic closure. I did add, wrapped around and tied a bow, the little red white twine and added a charm that I cut the ring off, but I added this little gingerbread charm I had in my stash. I've had these for a long time. I can't tell you where I got them, but you know, just check buttons and charms. There's, there's always a lot of gingerbread stuff. Now this, because it's got the quarter inch here, you can carefully flip this back underneath. And then here I put pattern paper mats with the corner punched on all of the waterfalls. And I added white, recipe cards because I am out of the ones that match the collection. Of course, I can take these out and replace them later on. And I left the inside top plain for photos and other recipe cards that I might want to glue in. So each one of them on this one flaps, opens up like that. Okay, so we got all of those. This side, I on the pocket, I used the same method to punch the pattern paper. I matted this cut out, cut apart on a black cardstock and added two more little charms, a Christmas tree and the gingerbread man. This is our closure here. I did add a circle cut apart. I punched a hole in it and added a little tag. So in this pocket, I have put lots of extra white recipe cards. 
one of the cut aparts, and then I made this booklet for special photos like official cookie taster and cookie baking crew. They are another one of those. So that's the booklet for that. And then here above this, I did mat another one of the pattern papers with the punched corners, and I put a matted smaller recipe card here and that and put black around it to kind of make it stand out. So all of these tuck inside. Of course, when you open this back with it tied, we have a little charm I hung on the back of the string. And make sure you tie a knot around it if you do that. I also matted a cut apart in the 4x6. I matted this one on black and a piece of pattern paper on the white to kind of break this up. I matted this section on white, added a belly band with of the border strips from the collection, and then another cut apart that I matted to white and some more of the gingerbread um, charms. And if you do this with something, you need to make sure you get something that's really flat like that, or maybe you have a punch that you could punch something, or fussy cut, fussy cut out some. So now here we untie this, and that means we can open these pages back like this. I just left them all plain with patterned paper. I did end up using extra sheets of paper from another collection of this that I had. This is another 4x6 matted to white. And then it flips this away again. These are plain, just patterned paper and another cut apart on white. And then um, if you want, these can accordion out like this. And, of course, the other way, too. So that is the sugar and spice recipe folio that I designed for Country Craft Creations. I hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and will um, make it. And if you do, share your photos in the Facebook group, the private Facebook group for Country Craft Creations called Scrapbookers of Country Craft Creations. If you're not a member, you do need to join. You have to answer three questions when you request to join. If you answer your questions, uh, then you will be approved to join by camera, the owner of the, the store. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Give me a thumbs up. When you subscribe, click the bell so you'll be notified if you uh, have a Google account. And also remember to check out countrycraftcreations.com for your Paper crafting supplies. This again is sugar and spice in the 12 by 12 size. And again, I want to thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.